Hey everyone, wake up! A new video from Learning Weekly just dropped. What? Oh my god, no freaking way, dude! What? It's been seven months? Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck, man? So in the comment from the last video, Victor Ruiz said, How do psychedelic drugs work? And that's exactly what we're going to answer in this video. Remember to leave a comment below about what the next video should be. And also, like and subscribe if you want to see more. And now, for the video. Warning! Psychedelic drugs will be discussed in this video. I'm not endorsing the use of any of these substances. Don't do drugs. Have you ever wanted to see God? Taste the rainbow? Expand your mind? Be one with the universe? These are the effects of psychedelic drugs. Psychedelics are a type of hallucinogen, meaning that they induce hallucinations. But unlike other hallucinogens like weed or PCP, psychedelics are what's known as serotonin receptor agonists, which means that they bind to serotonin receptors and activate them. When under the influence of psychedelics, the physiological symptoms that users experience are dilated pupils, irregular heart rate, irregular breathing, and changes in blood pressure. But these aren't very interesting. The fascinating effects of psychedelics all happen in the mind. LSD, known colloquially as acid, is actually one of the newest psychedelics. It was discovered in 1938 by Albert Hoffman, who first discovered the compound in a fungus called ergot that grows on rye crops. Hoffman accidentally discovered the effects of LSD when he absorbed some of it through his skin, and he realized that the drug made him see things that weren't real. After this discovery, he wanted to test it using a real dose. So, like any great scientist, he intentionally ingested some LSD. But since there was no research on the substance, the dose he took was extremely high, and it caused him to go into a panic. The effect that LSD had on Hoffman's mind astounded him. Reports from him and others who tried the substance told of extremely vivid visions that could be spiritual experiences, reliving past events, reverting back to childhood, or even ego death. Ego death is a concept that one's sense of self is lost entirely, and the person feels completely disconnected from their body for a period of time. Users of LSD and other psychedelics often remark about how they feel so connected and in tune with the universe itself that while on psychedelics, they have experiences where they leave their body and float away. The working theory on ego death is that psychedelics are actually able to deactivate a part of our brain called the default mode network. Think of your brain as a company that has many different departments like human resources, accounting, sales, and so on. Now let's say that the departments are like different areas of your brain and the default mode network is the CEO of the company. In this instance, the CEO, or default mode network, is very strict and only allows the different departments or areas of the brain to talk to each other under specific circumstances. This keeps the company working at its highest efficiency, but the different departments are never able to freely talk to each other. In essence, the different areas of the brain are unable to communicate unless the default mode network allows. Psychedelics are able to essentially deactivate the default mode network, allowing the different areas of the brain to interact and work in ways that the person has never experienced before. Many users of psychedelics report synesthesia, which is when the senses interact with each other. Remember when I said taste the rainbow? This also applies to sounds making visuals and other sensations which can make your visions feel as if they are real. These effects that psychedelics have on the brain were particularly interesting for scientists and psychologists all over the world. In fact, after LSD was first synthesized, 
the lab that produced the compound sent it to labs all over the world for research purposes. Quickly, psychologists realized that psychedelics could be used on people with various mental illnesses to treat them. PTSD, depression, anxiety, addiction, and many other mental illnesses seem to be able to be treated in some form with psychedelics. It's believed that the deactivation of the default mode network, coupled with the life-changing experiences under the influence of psychedelics, were able to help many people with these mental illnesses, particularly the ones suffering from addiction. This brief period of science over the span of almost two decades was sadly cut short when the American government realized the effect of psychedelics on young people. Although it started out only being used in labs, LSD quickly broke out of labs and into the streets during a time when counterculture was on the rise and young people in America were taking this and other drugs recreationally. This counterculture movement, which idolized drug use and other debauchery, is the main cause for the war on drugs started by President Richard Nixon. In the 70s, the media started spreading misinformation about LSD and other psychedelics, which eventually ended with the compounds being classified as Schedule I drugs among this long list. Even despite the fact that psychedelics aren't proven to be addictive in any way, and were showing promise in treating the mentally ill, this started a dark age in psychedelic research. But LSD wasn't the only psychedelic being used by people in America. In fact, the Americas are thought to be the birthplace of most psychedelic compounds, and is where humans first started ingesting psychedelics to expand their minds. The first of these compounds is psilocybin, commonly referred to as magic mushrooms. These mushrooms have been around since before recorded history, and can be found naturally in every single continent on Earth except for Antarctica. Most of these mushroom species grow in the Americas, and anthropologists have found that ancient humans in modern-day Mexico and Central America have been consuming these little mushrooms in a spiritual context for thousands of years. Now, why would these ancient people want to consume mushrooms? Well, many indigenous cultures in the Americas would ingest psychedelics in religious ceremonies where they experienced visions sent to them from divine beings and saw them as messages from the gods. Even today, people in indigenous communities still practice traditional religious ceremonies with different psychedelics that are native to their region. For example, in North America, native people have been smoking the peyote cactus plant which contains the psychedelic compound mescaline for thousands of years. Native Americans smoke peyote in a religious context in order to connect with the earth, feel its energy, and see visions about the world around them. And in South America, particularly in the Amazon rainforest, indigenous tribes have been consuming a brew known as ayahuasca, which contains the active compound DMT, or dimethyltryptamine. DMT as a compound is special because it still baffles scientists to this day. You see, DMT is naturally found in human blood and urine samples in trace amounts, suggesting that the body is able to produce DMT naturally. However, scientists have yet to properly identify exactly where and why the DMT is being produced. The current theory is that DMT plays a role in dreaming and may be the reason why we are able to see vivid visions when we are in deep sleep. This theory also proposes that DMT is produced by the pineal gland, which is responsible for producing many of the chemicals that regulate different functions in the body. Although psychedelics experienced a period where all research had been abandoned because of the iron fist of world governments, there is still hope. Recently, there has been a psychedelic revival among the scientific community, where scientists have been granted the opportunity to test psychedelics in studies pertaining to treating the ever-growing epidemic of mental illness. Now, even more research is being done and laws are becoming more lax around the use of these drugs. In America, already there are multiple cities that have decriminalized psilocybin, and Oregon has decriminalized the possession of small amounts of any psychedelic, and other states and cities are likely soon to follow. This could truly be a monumental moment in history where psychedelics are widely available for people to use to their creative, spiritual, and emotional benefit. 
And remember, don't do drugs, and thanks for watching.